Okay, I think for right now we can get started though, um, because we do have six, so we can at least run for, for a few minutes here. So, um, okay, welcome everybody to the February 23rd meeting of the Transportation Parking Commission. My name is Donna Lascalia. I'm the Director of Public Works and I'm the Chair of the Commission. Um, as uh, I just want to announce that this meeting is being audio and video recorded and I'm trying to enable the transcription and I'm having um, a little difficulty doing that, but I think I just got it done. Um, okay, uh, Cindy, uh, when you are ready, please call the roll. You're muted. Donna Lascalia? Here. Jody Casper? Not here. Jamie Albro Fisher? Wayne Fiden? Here. Nancy Forrestal? Here. Karen Foster? Here. Jamila Gore? Adam Novit? Here. Diana Day? That's it. Okay, Councilor Gore, I just wanna confirm that you are able to unmute yourself. Um, I've got you as a co-host, so I just wanna make sure that that function Can is working. Yes, now we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Okay, we have a quorum, so we'll get started. Um, wanna ask if any member of the public who is here uh, wishes to speak to the commission on any topic. If you are here for a particular agenda item, uh, just to run a more orderly meeting, I would just request that you wait until that agenda item comes up and then I will take public comment uh, on, on that. Um, but if you're here to speak to something that is not on the agenda, you are welcome to raise your hand and we will call on you and, and you're welcome to speak to us. Um, that would be your virtual raise hand feature. Okay. Um, scanning and don't see anyone who wishes to speak for public comment. All right, so we will move along. Uh, next is the approval of minutes from the prior meeting, which is January 18th, 2022. May I have a motion for a positive recommendation, please? So moved, Ms. Wayne. Second. I'll second. Okay, is there any discussion on the minutes from the previous meeting of January 18th, 2022? Okay, hearing none, Cindy, please call the roll. Donna Lascalia? Yes. Jody Casper? Jamie Albro Fisher? Wayne Fiden? Uh, Wayne, you're muted. All right, yes. Okay. Nancy Forrestal? Yes. Karen Foster? Yes. Jamila Gore? Yes. Adam Novit? Yes. Diana Day? That's it. Okay, thanks, Cindy. Okay, next is reports from departments and subcommittees. I just have a brief update on behalf of DPW. So the, the paving project um, that was underway in the city last summer has paused for the winter, but we anticipate that work will resume in the spring. So this is punch list items um, and, and other matters which need to be resolved. Um, we expect that work to be complete by June 30th of this year. There's also several mass DOT projects that are ongoing right now. The exit 19 at Damon Road project, the King Street Corridor Improvements Project, uh, reconstruction of bridges uh, over Route 5 uh, on I-91 um, and Damon Road reconstruction, um, which has actually paused for the winter, but we anticipate will resume in the spring. So those are all mass DOT run projects that the city does have some involvement in for utility work. Um, but any questions should be directed to Mass DOT District 2 uh, on those projects. Um, Wayne, do you have anything? Wayne, you're muted. 
And I was so brilliant before. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, sorry. Um, so we're working with VHB on our complete streets transition plan. And we expect to come before transportation parking, hopefully in March, if there's room on the agenda, with a penultimate draft and, and hope you all will weigh in on that draft before we finalize it. That's all I have. Okay, thanks very much. Any other updates from uh, any other commission members or uh, anyone have anything to, um, to add? Okay, seeing and hearing none, uh, we'll move to matters before the commission. Um, so the first item is an update of roadway safety concerns in the vicinity of Northampton High School. Um, so I put this on the agenda because I, I know that this is a uh, topic of conversation throughout the community, and I want to make sure that um, we're using every medium that is available to us to communicate to folks about the actions that the city has taken so far and what our future plans are, and also to clarify um, just some information that's sort of circulating um, in the community. Um, when I see the time is 4.14, um, if we, uh, what we will, what we are going to have to do is take a brief recess until I, you return. Don, I just, I just emailed them and said I couldn't attend, so I, I'll just stick with us. Oh, okay. All right, perfect. Um, then I will I will keep going with this agenda item. Um, okay, thanks very much. Um, so I, I what I what I will do is just kind of brief everybody on where we are, and then I will open this up to any member of the public who wishes to comment, um, and and then sort of turn it over to the larger commission. So just to recap um, the actions that the city has taken so far. Um, we have temporarily prohibited parking in five parking spaces on the westbound or child park side of Route 9. And those are posted with yellow, no parking signs. Um, and what this does is it opens up sight lines in the crosswalk and it also allows for a continuous bike lane westbound without the uh, infringement of parked cars. Um, so that was kind of an immediate emergency action that we could undertake. Um, we also advanced a U-turn prohibition ordinance uh, that was discussed at the, De at the December meeting of the TPC, um, and that was advanced to city council and it was passed. The sign has been installed at the intersection of Elm Street and North Elm Street. So what we were finding is that folks were coming down Woodlawn, um, being forced to take a right. Um, and and then kind of banging around a, a U-turn at that intersection, um, which was creating dangerous conditions. So um, that sign has has since been installed, um, and and hopefully discourages that sort of behavior moving forward. Um, we have engaged our our traffic engineering firm, Fuss and O'Neill. They do quite a bit of work, uh, traffic or related engineering work for the city in a variety of different locations. Um, most recently, they did a study of the stop signs up on Village Hill and that ordinance um, was recently passed by uh, City Council at its last meeting um, to actually codify the, the stop signs up on Village Hill. Um, but uh, that aside, um, we have engaged them uh, to do a big picture long term study of of the roadway geometry, the various uh, intersections. Um, it play around the high school and to give us uh, uh, recommendations about how to best move forward uh, and, and make alterations potentially to the roadway. Um, and, and this is sort of a long-term project. We're looking at probably a four or five month review that does a very detailed analysis of turning movements, vehicle counts, um, and a very close look at the roadway geometry to examine what improvements can be made at the Elm and North Elm intersection, if it is feasible to reopen the old service road that runs right in front of the high school, what that would look like and what that merge onto Route 9 would potentially look like. But this is a long-term study um, and they will give us uh, their opinion about the, what the best way to proceed is to make the area safer. It could also include uh, raised crosswalks. It can include a traffic signal. It will examine the feasibility of of a roundabout at that intersection. Um, it will look at a lot of different possibilities. And then it will give us an opinion of probable cost about 
about what the logistics around these possibilities may look like and what the price tag of these uh, uh, potential improvements may look like. Um, and that's really the first step. Um, and, and then, you know, there will obviously be more community engagement and we will have to make a determination about how best to proceed. So that's sort of a long range view in the short term. Um, the mayor, the police chief, and I and school administrators have, have met on site to take a look at the existing parking lots to consider what uh, a, a potential drop-off zone could look like just on a temporary basis to try to uh, uh, eliminate some of the foot and vehicular traffic in the area. Um, I, I also want to just clarify some information that's that's floating around out there. Um, Route 9 is entirely under city jurisdiction in this area, though it is a numbered route. MassDOT does not have jurisdiction over this roadway. This is all city jurisdiction. So um, the what MassDOT um, could potentially get involved in is if we were to look to alter the speed limit, um, but that is not part of this analysis, which we are doing. There's a whole process that runs through MassDOT to alter speed limits, um, but, but the work that we are doing at this point is looking at roadway geometry and safety improvements within the geometry um, it, that are, again, something that is under uh, city jurisdiction and not mass DOT jurisdiction. So I just wanted to clarify some information that was circulating out there and, and that had actually been published in the Gazette to make sure that, that we all are, are very clear that, that this is a, a city-owned uh, roadway and it, this is something that the city is responsible for. Um, so... That is uh, kind of the current conditions, and I will open this up to any member of the public who's here who wishes to speak about this agenda item. Uh, if, if anyone uh, would like to comment on it, you're welcome to do so now. Please raise your hand and, and we'll, um, we'll call on you, um, if, you would, if you'd like to, to address the commission. Okay, I don't see, oh, I see one hand. Candy. Hi, Candy Gibbs, Hinkley Street um, here in Florence. I drive by the high school frequently and it's um, very challenging when I get there right a little before 9 a.m. <laughs> because that's drop off hour. Um, so I'm getting used to the new time zone, time drop offs. Is there a way to um, maybe put on the marquee outside the high school, like when drop off and pick up is? I know that some they tell us when their break is, but some of us who commute through here go, oh no, I'm stuck behind the line. I should have gone around the block. Um, is there a way to communicate that, or when the when the hours are solidified, just say this is you know a drop off zone at 9 a.m. and is it, I don't know if it's 3.30, I don't know the drop off, the pickup times, but just to inform the public somehow that this is gonna be a slow road with a lot of pedestrians as well. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I definitely can't speak on behalf of school administrators, um, but what I do after a meeting like this is I, I make a, sort of a log of all of the comments. Um, and I will share that with the superintendent. Um, and and we're, we're obviously open to suggestions from the community for, for sort of interim measures. Um, so I will make sure that, that that comment is passed along. Thank you. And I, and I wanna say thank you for putting two cross, crossing guards out there in the morning it, it, with their whistles, it really helps. Okay, thank you. We'll pass that along as well. Okay. Anyone else have any comments, questions for us? Okay, any members of the commission uh, have any comments? Councilor Foster, go ahead. Thanks, Director. A couple of questions. Um, I, it's it's like light speed timing that this traffic study is is um, commissioned already. So thank you so much for that. And I, I think I was writing notes and missed it. Can you tell me? I heard it was four to five months, but I didn't catch um, when the study would be happening. Do you do you have that? It, yeah, so we're still working out the details of the traffic study. It's, it, you know, for something like this, 
Um, we have to be very specific about what we're looking for and where we're looking for it. Um, so, you know, we have to have a certain level of back and forth um, with the engineering firm. So we're still finalizing the details on that. And we also have to finalize our funding source um, to pay for this. Um, so that's something that we're going to be working through over the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, I, I would anticipate that as soon as those details are finalized and, and we do execute a contract, um, that again, you know, based on their schedule and how long data collection and analysis will take, we're looking at we're looking at probably four to five months. So we anticipate that the timing on this is good because school obviously continues to be in session. We wouldn't want to be doing something like this, you know, in the summer months. So my, I would anticipate that, it, you know, as soon as we finish what we need to do here, this this will be starting shortly. Oh, thank you. That was really clarifying. What I heard was the study itself would last four to five months. So that's where I was trying to think like, no, it's got to happen during the school year. So I, yeah. I get it. Thank you. That makes yeah. sense now. Yeah. Um, and then I just had a, another question for you. Has, so I heard you said you met with the police chief and the mayor and the superintendent um, to look at the parking lot. Have any changes been implemented yet or are they changes are forthcoming? No, what it what I was actually waiting for was school to not be in session this week. Um, and I, 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 we wanted to take a look at, at the lower section of the parking lot where the students park and see what that looks like empty and just sort of see what the geometry looks like in there. And if we could entertain some sort of drop off zone there that might be um, convenient and safe um, and not in that order either. So um, let me rephrase that safe and convenient. Um, but it's a little bit tricky to do, um, you know, when there's the typical congestion that's there. So we want to we want to try to take a look at that this week and just see, you know, what the options are. But obviously, if we were to implement something like that, there's there is planning and, and communication um, that, that needs to go into that and certainly not a unilateral decision. So we would need to proceed cautiously with that. Got it. That makes a lot of sense. That was my other question is if parents or PTO was was going to be involved in that both for logistics and communication. But it sounds like that's that's coming. But um down the road yes they absolutely would be i mean you know in a perfect world we would come up with an interim solution to to try to pull as much foot and vehicle traffic off of route nine that's associated with the high school as possible um, in a perfect world but it's unclear given sort of the confines that we're working with if that's something that's possible and there's a certain level of engineering that's going to have to go into that we don't want to make um, a, a choice which is going to make, you know, a, which is going to take a situation and make it uh, worse. So we just want to be very careful that anything that we're implementing um, is beneficial um, and not reactionary. Got it. Thank you. All right, Councillor Gore, go ahead. I'm wondering, since there's no U-turn um, at that at the high school anymore, do you anticipate people going into that drive by the high school and coming and trying to make a U-turn there and causing more traffic problems that way? I think that's that's a good question. And that's why we have to be careful when we implement changes like this, because they often have uh, consequences that aren't necessarily um, unanticipated, but they can be unintended. So one of the things that our engineering firm will be looking at is what is the behavior of cars who now may get engaged in this? Well, I've been forced to take a right. Now I can't turn around. So I need to find somewhere to turn around. So that's going to be part of the car counts, traffic counts that they take um, to see if, if vehicles are behaving like this. Um, you know, I, I've spoken with the superintendent and, and I've spoken with uh, Megan Peck of, of the, uh, the PTO on this. And a lot of this is about messaging to the larger community. And, and we do want to make sure that we're engaging the school community to understand how their driving behavior, you know, can definitely um, have a negative impact on, on traffic patterns around the high school. So a lot of this is just a, an education and outreach piece as well.
other comments or questions on this from uh, any member of the public who may be here to, to comment or from other members of the commission? Councilor Foster, go ahead. Thanks, Director. One more question that I, I realized I had is the blocked off parking spaces. I know some of the feedback we've gotten is that some cars are passing on the right when there's stopped traffic. Um, and when we talked a while ago, there was a possibility that in the spring after snow removal operations, a Jersey barrier or something could be placed there to prevent that from happening. Do you know if that's still logistically feasible or something that, that we, we could try out this spring? I think that, you know, what we are noticing now that those parking spots have been blocked off for probably, you know, a, a couple of months at this point, maybe even a little bit longer, um, is, is that parking is pushing uh, westbound uh, on Route 9. Um, so, so we're seeing parking in places that we didn't used to see parking, um, which again is why we did this more as a temporary measure instead of a permanent one. Um, that is something that we are going to engage our engineering firm on to, to really determine, we, we wanna be careful not to skew their data, their collected data. Um, so we, we want to be very careful with these parking spaces and just make sure that we're talking to them. They understand what we've done and why we've done it. If this change does need to be permanent, how, you know, if we put an actual physical impediment in the middle of the roadway, how will that change either driver or pedestrian behavior? And we, we need to be careful with that. So that is going to be a conversation that we will have with our engineering firm once they're fully on board and, and get started. So I, I actually can't fully answer that question right now. Sure, makes sense. Okay, any other comments or questions from anyone who's present on this? Okay, seeing and hearing none, I appreciate everyone's patience while we work through this process and, and we will continue to communicate out updates as, as uh, we have movement on this. And, and again, I just wanna mention that, that um, the mayor, the superintendent, the chief of police and, and other school administrators, as well as um, the PTO, I'm very grateful for everyone's support around this. And, and I think um, we're moving quite quickly um on this uh, or, or certainly more quickly um than than is typical for something like this so um, I, i'm very grateful for everyone's support on that so thank you okay next up is a discussion of a traffic calming request on burt's pit road so i will uh give a little bit of a background on this the chief is is not present so i will share the information that dpw has collected and i will also share the information um that the chief request uh, uh has collected uh on this street um and then i'm not sure if anyone from bart's pit road or that area is here um, but um, I, I will open it up to the commission. Um, so I, I just wanna add, um, we have three traffic calming requests on the agenda this afternoon. So this is uh, our new traffic calming process where we put these on the agenda once we have data and, and the speed data and accident data to report out on. And then we hear from the residents um, prior to, to sort of having a, a public conversation as a commission about this so that we can make the best decisions possible uh, uh, about how to best proceed. Um, so I'll just give a little background on, on this Burt's Pit Road matter uh, and share the data that we have. So we received a traffic calming request for Burt's Pit Road. And uh, I will paraphrase just for the sake of brevity here, Birch Pit Road was repaved in the summer of 2019. Um, and the uh, person who submitted this request says that it has been observed that automobile velocity has increased significantly to the point where there are multiple accidents um, and uh, they are concerned about speeding. Um, they're saying that the straight portion of the road seems to invite many to travel uh, more than the posted speed limit. 
Um, there's also a comment here about the oversized entrance to Woods Road from Burt's Pit Road. Um, so uh, what I will do is share what our data collection returned on this. Um, first thing we did was a, a collision data review. So a five-year collision analysis revealed that there were 22 collisions. There were three in 2016, four in 2017, eight in 2018, four in 2019, one in 2020, and two in 2021. Most of the collisions were clustered between Woods Road and Redford Drive. The contributing factors varied, but they did include driver impairment or inattention, snow, vehicles pulling out from intersections onto Burt's Pit Road, and speed. Uh, it is notable that the section of roadway that is locally referred to as the S-curves um, is, is basically one of the areas that is on our watch list that ices over uh, more quickly than other areas in the city, just mainly due to uh, its elevation. Um, so beyond that section of roadway, there was a cluster of three collisions in the area of Burt's Pit Road at Emerson Way. Um, it's also just something as, as we look at all of these collisions to note that in 2018, uh, so prior to paving, there were eight collisions, but that number has significantly dropped off since the paving. Um, we've got one in 2020 and uh, two in 2021. So um, police department also pulled covert speed data. They pulled it from the area of 978 Burt's Pit Road from May 11th through 18 of 2021. Um, they analyzed just under 7,000 vehicles and the 85th percentile speed was 39 miles an hour. So this is a posted 30 mile an hour zone. So it confirms that, that there is definitely um, a, a speeding issue here. Um, so in terms of uh, engineering review, um, Burt's Pit Road provides one lane of travel east and west. It's approximately 16,200 feet long. The width ranges from 22 to 33 feet. There are no sidewalks. There are double yellow center lines along the entire length and white edge lines or fog lines in certain sections of the roadway. Parking is allowed along the entire street there is an existing speed regulation for Burt's Pit Road, meaning that there has been an engineering study um, that was done back in the 80s and approved by Mass DOT, and that's why we have those regulatory speed limits there. Um, so the speed limit uh, from Ryan Road for 2.56 miles east is 30 miles an hour. It's 20 miles an hour for a very short stretch. And then it goes back to 30 miles an hour till to Prince Street. Um, and the pavement condition ranges, but a large portion of this was repaved. So that is the data collection uh, that we did on this section of Burt's Pit Road. And now what I'd like to do is open it up to anyone from that neighborhood or from that area who would like to uh, comment on this matter if there is anybody here from the public. Okay, I don't see any hands from the public. Um, is there anyone on the commission who has any comments about Bart's Pit Road or any questions about anything that I just shared? Okay, I don't, I see silence on Bart's Pit Road. Okay, so with that being said, um, I, I, I guess based on our data collection, um, the, the chief of police and I will confer, um, given that there's no further comments on this. Um, we do note um, that we see um, accident trends trending downward, um, but speeds trending upward. Um, so these are very, you know, tricky um, sort of situations to, to resolve. Um, and it is difficult to slow cars down, uh, notwithstanding some sort of 
physical impediment in the middle of the roadway. Um, when Birds Pit Road was in poor condition, people definitely went a lot slower. Um, so at a future meeting, uh, we will return to the commission um, with uh, uh, what we recommend or what we recommend the city action to be on this stretch of roadway if there's no one from the public or from the commission who has further comment on this. And it doesn't look like there is anyone. Okay, so we will move along to a discussion of a traffic calming request on North Maple Street. Um, so this was submitted to us uh, last summer. And uh, the resident concern was that traffic was speeding. Um, the entire neighborhood did feel the same way um, and that it was particularly hard in the afternoons where there are a lot of people parking and walking. Um, they also mentioned that the bike path crossing was in the area of concern. Um, so again, just like with Bart's Pit Road, um, we did a, a collision data review on this, um, and we did a five-year look back. So total collisions by year, 2016, we had one collision, 2017, five collisions, 2018, six collisions, 2019, eight collisions, 2020, five collisions, and 2021, one collisions. Uh, so in total, there were 26 collisions documented on North Maple Street over that five-year period. Three involved personal injury. Uh, it's notable that 14 of the 26 collisions occurred at the intersection of North Maple Street and Bridge Road, um, which is a signalized intersection. Of the collisions at that intersection, nine of 14 were rear-end collisions caused by driver inattention. Out of the 26 collisions, three involved vehicles striking parked cars. Um, the remaining collisions did not reveal um, anything notable. Uh, speed data was collected July 28th through August 8th of 2021. During the assessment period, speeds of nearly 30,000 vehicles were measured. The street is a posted 30 mile an hour zone. The average speed was 28 miles an hour. The 85th percentile speed was 32.2 miles an hour. You don't see speed as a significant factor on this street. Um, so I'll just uh, briefly go through our engineering review. North Maple Street provides one lane of travel north and south. It's approximately 4,675 feet long. Widths range from 23 to 33 feet. There are concrete sidewalks on both sides of the street from Main Street to High Street. An asphalt sidewalk continues on the west side from High Street to Bridge Road. There are double yellow lines and white edge lines or fog lines between Bridge Road and Mountain Street. There are several no parking zones listed in the city's code of ordinances. There is an existing speed regulation for North Maple Street from 1986 and it's 30 miles an hour. Pavement condition does vary with some sections in poorer condition than others. So that is our uh, assessment of North Maple Street. And I will open it up to any member of the public who is here and wishes to speak about North Maple Street. Erin, um, I see your hand up. We'll unmute you in a moment. Okay, we will try to unmute you. Cindy, you having any luck? There we go. Go ahead, Erin. Okay, Erin, we can't hear you. Um, we also can't seem to see you either, or at least I can't. Let's see, um, Cindy, why don't you um, uh, unmute the community classroom and, and we'll come back to Aaron. Hi, can you all hear me okay, okay. in my mask? Yeah, we can hear okay. you, go, go ahead. <laughs> awesome, hi, I'm Megan Allen. I'm the owner operator of the community classroom. Um, and you can see Maple Street like right out the window. Uh, I just wanna say first, I'm feeling like a slacker when I'm seeing this traffic calming request versus the prior one with all the details. So I get a C minus for my writing skills. Um, 
But yeah, so we have students that are coming in and out of the classroom for private tutoring a lot. And I just worry about the mixture of kids and cars flying by. Uh, and also things that I've noticed are that when JFK, when the kids come out of school, many of them, some of them come to the classroom, many of them opt for ice cream and such at friendlies, but we get such a big JFK middle school crowd, um, especially in the afternoon. And I worry about cars not stopping at the bike path when those kids are crossing. And uh, and then I don't know if my, my neighbors are on, but I have some neighbors too who are on Maple Street because I, I work here but I also live here. I live like close to the corner of Maple and Bardwell. And we just have so many toddlers and young kids in the area too. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm speaking as a, a, a resident and a business owner. Uh, I really, Donna, I appreciate all the data collected, uh, especially like the speed, um, the accidents, that is all really helpful. So um, yeah, so, and there's my, <laughs> there's my neighbor. Um, who's raising his hand also, who we've been, we've been talking about this for a bit. So um, thank you. And please excuse my C minus writing skills. Okay, thank you, we appreciate it. Okay, the, the name on the screen is Katrina. Hey, good afternoon. Um, my name is Chris. Um, I just switch over to my wife's phone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Apologies. We're in the woods right now and it's kind of snuck up on me. So um, can, can you say your first and last name, please? And your absolutely, abso absolutely. So my name is Chris. It's K-R-I-S. Last name is Van Arsen. It's V as in Victor, A-N-N-A-E-R-S-S-E-N. -S -S -E and I'm a resident at 90 North Maple Street. So like, like Megan said, um, you know, I, I, we're, we're neighbors. I live right on North Maple and speed has certainly been a concern in our area. We had started pulling together a driving petition, um, hadn't done that. I was um, glad to hear of the, the, the data that was collected. Um, that was certainly interesting to hear that the, the average speeds is right around 30 miles an hour. Um, you know, that seems consistent with what we're seeing, but then there's also the handful of cars that just get so much speed. Um, you know, it's almost like an open lane highway. So that, you know, a good number of folks are, are treating it the way it should be. And then there's just, you know, I've got young kids and there's a handful of cars that are doing, I mean, it's gotta be 60 miles an hour. Um, it's kind of just an open stretch of road between the bike path area and um, and Bridge Street. So so those are certainly my concerns. I'm happy to, to chime in anymore, but um, yeah, I do appreciate this being on the, on the agenda and, and attention being placed on it. Um, you know, I'd certainly be interested in any kind of traffic calming measures or anything else in the area. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you very much for your comments. Thanks. Any other members of the public here to speak on this traffic calming request? Okay, Erin, let's, um, let's see if we can go back to you and get you unmuted here so we can hear you. Can you hear me, Donna? Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead, Erin. I live by the bike path, and these two people do not understand. I'm sorry, what's the name, Erin? Erin Walcott, and I live at 54 North Maple Street, three houses up from the bike path. And the woman from the community learning, she knows me. And I understand what she's talking about at the beginning of the street from Main Street to the bike path. You have people pulling out, crossing, not using the crosswalk in the center of town. And it's horrible when the kids get out. The kids do not stop where they're supposed to at the bike path because this is also an emergency um, route for the fire department and the people who live here, you know, you hear the fire trucks going up to the VA all day long, all night long. The problem starts at High Street. That's where they pick up speed and that's where they don't stop to, when they're going down to the bike path. If you put a stop sign at High Street, that would eliminate the problem where the bike path and going up to Main Street is. 
because they would they would be forced to slow down at that point. Even the buses coming out of High Street do not stop making a turn coming out of that street. And I, walk, and I can tell you, I walk this area all the time. And Donna, you know that I do. I, had, I, I sure do. Erin, can you just clarify you're suggesting a stop sign at high? Is that, is that what you're High suggesting? Street, right. Okay. And right there actually is a entrance to the casket shop that is right behind my house. Can I make another recommendation for a stop sign that's not North Maple Street? Uh, uh, off this topic, um, if 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 you could, um, yeah, if you could send me an email, that would be preferable, just so we can stay on, so we can stay on this agenda topic. Okay. But Don, okay. I can tell you, I I um, I get maybe five six hours sleep. Okay, at night. You can hear the kids on their motorcycles going up and down the street. They're going 50, 50 miles an hour. The cars at night, they're going 50, 55 miles up the street. And it's an ongoing problem. And all the neighbors, all we all had the same complaint with the speed from High Street all the way to Bridge Street. All right, thanks, Aaron. I appreciate the the comments. You know, one of and I'll just briefly respond to that. One of the things that we um, th one of the things that we do uh, struggle with when we collect data and we see, okay, what is the eighty fifth percentile data telling us? And and we don't see speed as a significant a problem. You always have these outliers. So we have places where there's where there's speeding, but there's not speeding. And so the challenge for us is how do we address, you know, the out these these sort of outlier cars who are running through somewhere at 50, 60 miles an hour and 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 could potentially cause a, a significant issue when the the vast majority of folks are are traveling the speed limit. That's that's um that's really the the challenge for us. Um, I see the, the community classroom again with your hand raised. We'll unmute you here. Hi, thanks, Donna. This is Megan Allen again at uh, the community classroom at 29 North Maple. Um, just an idea too. It seems like a lot of people aren't no are driving and not noticing the bike path crossing. And so I don't know if that's going to be something that's picked up with studying like the speed and the traffic pattern. Um, so I wonder too, if there's a way to make the bike path more noticeable for cars, again, thinking about the number of kids, especially that are walking across there after school. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. And, and that's something that'll be striped as part of our contract in the spring. Um, so we, we go through, um, we go through and, and restripe um, double yellow center lines and fog lines, turning lines, and, and we'll be looking particularly at, uh, at, at bike path crossings um, as well. So this, this will be uh, a spot that, that we'll look at. Um, Candy, I see your hand up. I'll try to unmute. Okay, you I'm unmuted. Yep. Okay. Um, I, I travel through that area, of course. Um, I think about the bike path not being noticeable because sometimes I have to turn left to go to the dojo um, there when traveling from the center of Florence. And it's it's not very noticeable that there's a crosswalk there because that entrance into that parking lot um, at the big, it's the old Ross building, Ross Brothers building. Um, it's just so wide and open and flat, and that's where the bike path is. It's visually not noticeable. It's like, oh my God, there's a bike path there. Oh, that's where the crosswalk is. Um, and I travel there a lot, but it's visually not, um, stick, it doesn't stick out. So I don't know if you can put bump outs where, you know, you approach it so you you can actually see the people, um, where you make it a narrower road. 
um, like you have at crosswalks at Smith, like it, they, you know, so it, anyway, just if there's something visually that can bring our attention to this is a major crossing, this would be helpful. Okay, good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, Erin, I see your hand back up. We'll unmute you here or try to. Okay, go ahead, Erin. Thank you. Um, part of the problem at the bike path is that people do not realize that at Bardwell Street, at North Maple Street, at Chestnut Street, at, um, um, and that's one down, at each of these bike paths, there is a stop sign because they're going into traffic and that means they need to stop. No one stops there. They just walk across, they just bike across, and that's the problem that we're running into is no one is using that as a bike path coming into a major street that is also an emergency route for the fire department who's going up and down that road all day long. Fire, you know, they're up at the VA. The guys up there pull that alarm all day long and the guys have to go up there. There's nothing they can do about it. And it's always been that way. But when you get down to the bike path, all right, there are stop signs on each of these streets going through because they're supposed to stop at that road so that people know they're there. This is not a normal crosswalk. This is a bike path crosswalk. And that's the problem. People are using it as if, well, I can walk. This is a walkway. This isn't bike path. This is a crosswalk way. And they have to understand that this is a bike path. And if they're with friends on bikes, those kids on bikes aren't going to stop either. And that's part of this problem that they have to understand. They have to stop. There's too many cars going there. And that's why there's stop signs at each of these streets. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I hear you on that. I, I certainly see it when I'm, when I'm out on the path. So thank Hi. you. Thank you for that comment. Okay, any further comments from uh, from anyone on the public uh, on this topic before I, I ask any members of the commission if they'd like to weigh in on this? I don't see any other members of the public. Um, any member of the any members of the commission have any comments um, or questions about what we've talked about? Adam, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I'll just say that the um the uh, I'm the director of Lilly Library, and um, the crosswalk that's a, that essentially connects the Civic Center to the um, VFW there. Uh, I think in some ways it shares some issues with the other crosswalk um, on North Maple, and the DBW put a uh, a divider with a placard on it in there to indicate that the crosswalk is in fact there. Um, and that seems like a, you know, it, it, to me, when people are coming up Meadow and they're turning on to, um, uh, what is that park there, that it's the same kind of thing. Like they're just concerned with getting onto park. They're not necessarily aware of the crosswalk. They're not looking for it. So the signalization or the, the marking of that as a crosswalk and the dividing of the two lanes has effectively narrowed it. I, I, I like that solution. I was glad that the DPW implemented it and I'll leave it at that. Okay, thanks Adam. Yeah, what Adam's referring to are their pedestrian markers um, that, that sit right on the double yellow center line in the middle of the crosswalks and, and they're just sort of, a, I mean, they're actually a physical impediment in some ways um, and drivers hit them all the time. Um, but you know they can definitely slow people down or call your attention to a crosswalk that you might not notice is there. So that's that's something that we often deploy um, to to just help everybody to understand that there's a crosswalk there. So thanks for that comment. Any other members of the commission have any comments? Councillor Foster, go ahead. Yeah, just two thoughts about the bike path in particular. Um, you know, I notice. I think one of the the things that may make that bike path crossing a little trickier 
for drivers or, or even um, people using it to navigate is how it doesn't it doesn't go straight across the street. It kind of like has to connect um, the north side of the bike path and the south side. They don't fully connect, so it kind of goes a little bit on the diagonal. It makes it maybe a little bit longer. Um, so I, I don't know if that's a factor. And then hearing the nearby residents talk, you know, I can only imagine if that's so heavily used by um, JFK students that there's probably also an opportunity for education for students of, of how to navigate those crossings, um, you know, and, and that's not necessarily the, the specific role of the commission, but it might be an interesting note for, um, you know, for the school itself to think about um, helping students to understand um, the safety aspects of, of using the bike path and the traffic is, isn't necessarily going to stop. I think that's a good comment. I, I intend to do some follow up with the school administration, you know, on on the high school topic. Um, so I I can certainly mention this as is an opportunity for their own internal conversation um, that that needs to happen. So thank you for that comment. Hey, Councillor Gore, go ahead. Um, I used to live on North Maple, um, and I used to go on that bike path a lot. And I think that, you know, the stop signs are good, but I think there's there's a lot of confusion with pedestrians about if they need to stop or not. Cause I know I used to be confused about stopping there. So I think having like uh, something in the, in the median to say that it's a crosswalk would also help with slowing down traffic and it would help the pedestrians kind of have more of a crosswalk designated for them instead of having to stop at the beginning of the crosswalk. Yep, thank you. Your, your point is well taken. I mean, we, we do, it, you know, it's also harder this time of year because we have to remove our, our middle of the street signage um, so that it, it doesn't get uh, destroyed by our plowing and de-icing operations. And, and it's just sort of, you know, something else for someone to, to hit when it's icy out. Um, so it, it does get a little bit tricky this time of year where we can't mark up these crosswalks the way we would like to mark them up. And, and obviously a lot of the, the paint is faded too um, that this time of year, you know, just because it's, it's been, you know, heavily salted or, or plowed over and, and everything just needs to be freshened up. So um, that it, your, your point is taken, thank you. Any other comments on this from anyone at all? Erin, um, I see your hand up. We'll run back to you one more time here. Or we will try to. Yep, go ahead, Erin. Something that might be helpful for there in Chestnut Street and Straw Avenue and Bardwell Street, because those are all the streets that the bike path crosses other than Bridge Road at the end up by Look Park. Why can't those be color coordinated like they did over by Friendly's with that crosswalk this summer? Why can't we paint those in different colors, bright colors? So that someone coming down the street, they're going to see this bright crosswalk. So they're going to know, well, this is different. And maybe that would be one of the solutions on North Maple Street to bring to the attention of drivers that, hey, guess what? You've got people crossing over here. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that suggestion. And just a couple of comments about that. Um, we can certainly... Um, we can certainly look at that. Um, we do have to be careful with um, hitting uh, what are called MUTCD standards for any signage or markings. That's a manual and uniform traffic control devices. So we do have to have some level of consistency um, with our crosswalks, but we definitely have some tools at our disposal and, and you know, to see if we can get these things to pop is, is definitely a good suggestion. So thank you for that, I appreciate it. Okay, Katrina, I see that hand raised again. Go ahead. 
Great, thanks. Yeah, Chris Van Arsen again, um, and resident of 90 North Maple Street. I guess just one question for the commission. I'm trying to understand the process here. I think there's been a lot of talk this afternoon regarding the bike path crossing, and, and that's certainly a concern of mine as well. But um, you know, my my highest concern is just regarding the speed and kind of the Sheffield Bardwell um, intersection with North Maple. So could someone just kind of help me understand like what the next steps are in this? Yep, so, uh, so what we're doing, you know, we, we collect data. That's always the first thing that we do just so we can sort of understand what we're working with. And, and then what we like to do is hear from the residents um, because they often bring things to our attention that the data doesn't necessarily show. So, so that's what this is. Um, it, at this point, um, what we will do is take those comments and DPW engineering staff will work with the police department to determine what we think is a, a possible solution that can be implemented here to, to achieve the desired effect. And then the question is, okay, well, what is the desired effect? Um, we're, we're not necessarily trying to slow down 85% of the cars because they're actually complying with the speed limit. So what, what are we actually trying to do here? We're trying to bring awareness to, to crossings. We're trying to bring awareness to pedestrians. Uh, we're trying to bring awareness to, to locations where there could be potential conflict. And so what we need to review is what we can implement in those locations that might work so we've heard some suggestions for you know potential stop sign we've heard about you know potentially striping a bike path crossing better we've heard about you know potential uh, curb extensions um, so those are all things that we will look at and see what the feasibility of of any or all of these things are and then we will return to the commission with our recommendations so that's the that's the process that will happen, and and we ask that you bear with us while we do that. There there is a certain level of engineering assessment that that has to be completed here. Um, you know, when we talk about curb extensions, and and I'll just very briefly talk about that. Um, often that requires uh, utility relocation um, because utilities always run along the curb. You know, so it's not quite as simple as is just sort of shrinking the roadway. We have to say, okay, is there a drain in the way? Is there a sewer main in the way? Is there a water line in the way? Um, and we have to look, you know, is there a tree in the way? Um, we have to look and see if there are conflicts with our existing infrastructure and what we can do, you know, within the confines of the resources that we have available to us. So that's, that's how we will proceed from here, but we will communicate out a, any recommendation that we make um, to the neighborhood and we'll sort of reconvene um, with this commission to, to talk about it. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, if not, please raise your hand again. and. Okay. All right. Any other comments on on uh, this agenda item? Okay. Seeing and hearing none, uh, we will move on to discussion of the traffic calming request for Hinkley Street. Um, it's our final agenda item. Um, so we received a, a traffic calming request for Hinkley Street. Um, traffic calming request says that Hinkley Street is a connector street, and that since the street was repaired, since the street was repaired, cars travel faster up and down the street. Um, there's a comment here that there is only one stop sign at Warner Street. Um, there is a sidewalk the length of the street, um, but the person who submitted this request notes that there are are quite a few um, pedestrians and cyclists. Um, and, and that overall traffic in Bay State Village um, is, is definitely busier. Um, so, or busier than it has been. So again, um, like with um, the two prior traffic coming requests, I'll just run through the data that, that we collected here. So this was uh, the middle of last summer. Uh, Five-year collision assessment included data uh, from 2016 to, tw to the middle of 2021. So there were a total of six collisions. There was nothing in 2016, two in 2017, one in 2018, one in 2019, one in 2020, and one in 2021. It is notable that one collision that occurred at the intersection of Hinkley and Nonacuck streets was a fatal collision involving a bicycle and a vehicle. 
The investigator here determined that the cyclist had been traveling on Hinckley Street and had failed to stop at the stop sign at the end of Hinckley Street. The cyclist pulled in front of a vehicle traveling on Nonatuck Street and the driver was unable to stop in time. Two of the six collisions involved drivers striking objects, including a tree and the curb. Um, the police department pulled speed data um, and uh, they analyzed just under 3,000 vehicles. The street is a posted 30 mile an hour zone. The 85th percentile speed was 31.6 miles an hour. 4% um, of the vehicles of that 3,000 vehicles um, were identified as traveling at a speed that was enforceable. So um, the police department determined that no, speed, no significant speed issue was identified on Hinckley Street. Um, just from an engineering standpoint, Hinckley Street provides one lane of travel in both the north and south directions between South Main Street and Nonatuck Street. It's approximately 2,520 feet long and 22 feet wide. There's an asphalt sidewalk on the east side from Riverside Drive to Warner Street. There are several marked crosswalks and double yellow center lines. Parking is allowed along the street. There is a stop control on Hinckley Street at the north and south approaches to Warner Street and the north and south approaches to Nonatuck Street. So Hinckley Street um, is one of these streets that uh, is considered to be thickly settled. Um, there actually is no speed regulation here. So uh, I've talked about those black and white speed limit signs that are all over the city where there was actually an engineering study that was done um, and a, a speed regulation was put in place um, that, that is shown by a black and white speed limit sign. So this is actually uh, a street where no engineering assessment has been done, but the street is designated as thickly settled, meaning that there are uh, a certain number of houses within a certain, uh, uh, like mileage of the street. Um, and with that being the case, there is a statutory speed limit in the fact that in Massachusetts, that statutory speed limit is 30 miles an hour. So that is what um, the speed limit is on this street. So, and the pavement um, is recently reconstructed and so it is in excellent condition. So that is the data that is collected uh, from Hinckley Street. And I will ask if there's anyone here from the public um, who wishes to speak on this. Candy, I see your hand up. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't write this request, but when I saw it on the agenda, I came to this meeting. Um, I live on Hinckley Street, 147, 149. I saw the person get hit by the car and die. So did my son. It was pretty tra traumatic. Um, so part of that intersection problem is the speed coming down Nonatuck, and I know you put in two speed humps, but there should probably be a, another one along that road before you get to Hinckley Street, traveling from Florence Center towards the high school, because you go over those speed humps and you people accelerate, they come over the um, that little hump into that intersection of Hinckley and Nonatuck, and it's really hard to break and, and stop for the, anyone in that crosswalk, but thank you for the crosswalk. That helps. Um, but people are speeding down Nonatuck in towards that intersection. Um, I hear the cars because um, I live near the corner, <laughs> literally. And when they come around the corner and get onto Hinkley Street, if they're not going to stop at the first house or second house, the, everyone's accelerating down the road. It's a beautifully paved road. We lived through the construction of it, reconstruction of it, but now it's it's an attraction. Whenever you repave a road, it's beautiful, people speed. Bicyclists love it too, because it's smooth. Um, we have a lot more pedestrians ever since you put in that sidewalk and since COVID hit, like there are people walking everywhere. It's lovely, but let me tell you, every single car accelerates down and I watch how far down the road they go. And then they stop and pull into their own, their own um, driveway. I'm like, really? You sped down the road to go less than a quarter of a mile. Um, I'm not sure what the, any of the solutions should be other than um, it went to 22 feet. It was only 19 feet wide um, before this road went in in front of my house. Um, it, and there was no sidewalk. So you added a sidewalk and it went to 22 feet. Um, I'm hoping that you can reduce the speed limit down to 20 for a thickly settled environment. Um, maybe there should be something at where um, Maplewood Terrace comes in because it comes at a very odd angle. So people zoom down Hinkley, 
curve right onto Maplewood Terrace and zoom up the hill. And it is, people use it as a cut through street so they don't have to go down to the high school and take a left onto Riverside. This is the major cut through area even though we have one stop sign. Um, I don't know if speed humps can go in but maybe that would be helpful too. I don't think you can narrow it because you just put in a brand new road. I'm sure you can't touch the road in the new curb. Um, so I'm not sure what can be done, but people accelerate on this road um, and litter while they do it and throw things onto my sidewalk, <laughs> uh, which I clean up. Um, anyway, so I'm not sure what the other ideas are for just to, to slow everything down, but people do accelerate through here. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for your comment, appreciate it. Um, Mike, I see your hand up, we'll unmute you. Can um, we have Candy's last name? Sorry, <laughs> Gibbs, G-I-B-B-S, oh, I mean, okay. 147 Hinkley. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Hi. Okay, hi Mike, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Um, um, I, Mike Soroff um, on uh, 117 Hinkley Street. Um, I, I was very, I, I was surprised that the speed limit is, is, is 30. I always assumed it, it would be 25 for a street like that. But um, we, I do see cars going fast, but they're probably going 30 or, or, a, little, or a little faster. Not, um, and, and I, I'd agree with, with uh, uh, reducing the speed limit to 20 or 25 and hope that uh, it, it doesn't come to putting in speed bumps. Um, one thing in the request was that the, uh, that, that the volume of traffic is increasing. I, I'm not so sure. I moved in uh, right when the, the uh, um, redoing the street was, was completed in, in, 20, in 2018. And I'm not, not so sure that, that, that uh, the volume of traffic has increased. So, so I'd encourage the, the city to to uh, um, uh, to to take more to take another measurement so you can so you can get some idea of of of, of a trend because um, it you know it, traffic may be increasing on the street thanks yeah, thanks for your comments anyone else uh, from the public who'd like to speak on Hinkley Street? Any members of the commission have any comments or questions about Hinkley Street? Okay, uh, Councilor Foster, go ahead. Just a quick echo to the comment. Um, I, I bike around there quite a bit. And the to echo uh, what Candy had said earlier, what I usually notice is the crossing across Nanatuck is challenging with sight lines and, and traffic. Um, so that's that's actually usually where I'm where I'm noticing it is is trying to cross Nanatuck, um, both there and, and at Federal Street. Thank you for that. That's we we did you know quite a bit of work on Nanatuck and and particularly at that crossing. Um, you know, some years ago, a few years back. Um, Candy, I see your hand up again. Yes, thanks. Just to go back to what Karen said of that intersect track crossing that intersection at Nonatuck and Hinkley is um, what's not what didn't happen was connecting that beautiful sidewalk from Hinkley to Elm Street sidewalk down at Federal because. The pedestrians that come down Hinkley Street and take a right, they want to go to the high school or they want to take a right and go to downtown Northampton, they have to cross the street there once, go down to South Main, and then they have to cross a really challenging wide intersection that I know you've worked on a little bit, again, to get back to a sidewalk. So it's you're crossing twice when you could just create a sidewalk from Hinkley Street down the hill to connect to Federal, to connect to the current sidewalk. So 
it didn't quite finish the let's make this more pedestrian easy friendly because now the pedestrian have to cross Nonatuck twice in those crosswalks to get to the high school from here. Yeah, thank you for that comment. And and I recall at the time that there we had uh, internal conversation about that. Um, and and what I can add is that you know a, a lot of times um, adding sidewalk is quite challenging um, because of um, anything from public shade trees to uh, right away constraints, meaning that the city actually does not have rights. Um, to uh, have enough land to install a sidewalk in the existing footprint and, and would need to do some level of encroachment onto what is actually private property. Um, so, so sidewalks um, in various locations, you know, can definitely be challenging uh, for, for those reasons. Um, and, and that was part of the conversation around this, but thank you for, thank you for uh, bringing that up because it's, it's uh, their good comments. All right, any further discussion of anybody on Hinkley Street from anyone on Hinkley Street or from the commission? Um, so again, like the other traffic calming applications, um, what we will do is we will uh, confer, DPW will confer um, internally and with the police chief about um, what we think our recommendation should be to improve uh, the quality of life for residents in these areas. And we will return to the commission um, to have a discussion about what our recommendations are. So we ask that you bear with us while we work through that process. Okay. Seeing no other hands or hearing any other discussion, I'll ask, does anybody have any new business that they wish to discuss? Okay, seeing and hearing none, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Queen. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, hearing none, Cindy, please call the roll. Wait, who seconded? I did, this is Karen. Thank you. Okay, Donna? Yes. Jerry Casper, Jamie Albro Fisher, Wayne Fiden? Yes. Nancy Forstall? Yes. Karen Foster? Yes. Jamila Gore? Yes. Adam Novit? Yes. Diana Day? Great. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next month.